Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. And today we'll be looking at the difference between intramolecular versus intermolecular bonding. Now, intramolecular bonding has to do with the bonds that exist within molecules. So for example, if I was to draw a water molecule, the intramolecular bonds would be the bonds that hold the hydrogens to the oxygens. So intramolecular bonds hold atoms within molecules. And classic examples of intramolecular bonds include covalent bonds and ionic bonds. Let's now have a look at some examples of intermolecular bonding. Again, I'm going to use a water molecule, but in this particular example, I'll use more than one. And I'll also include the delta negative and delta positive charges on each of these atoms. Recall how oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen and hence has a delta negative charge, which then leaves hydrogen with a slightly positive charge because of an unequal sharing of these bonding electrons between each of these atoms. And this is responsible for water's ability to bond with other water molecules. So in this particular instance, this oxygen that's slightly negative is going to be attracted to this hydrogen from this second water molecule that's slightly positive. And we're going to get this electrostatic attraction between these two molecules. And that's termed an intermolecular bond. So intermolecular bonds occur between molecules and are responsible for holding molecules together. So the key difference between intra versus intermolecular bonding is intramolecular bonds occur within molecules while intermolecular bonds occur between molecules. A classic example of an intermolecular bond that you will come across is the hydrogen bond, which is exemplified here, where the slightly positive hydrogen is attracted to the slightly negative oxygen of the second water molecule. Now there are only three potential scenarios in which hydrogen bonding can occur one of which is exhibited in this illustration here. When we have a molecule containing oxygen attached by a covalent bond to hydrogen, that can exhibit hydrogen bonding. In addition, when we have fluorine attached to hydrogen within a molecule, that molecule can also exhibit hydrogen bonding. And the third and final example revolves around nitrogen. So when you have a molecule that contains nitrogen bonded to hydrogen, that molecule will also exhibit hydrogen bonding. Now, in order to ensure that you've understood this principle, I'm about to draw a number of molecules, and I'd like you to work out which of these molecules exhibits hydrogen bonding and why. So here are six molecules. Now, what I'd like you to do is attempt to work out which of these molecules exhibits hydrogen bonding. So pause the video and once you're confident that you have some answers, resume the video to see how you have fared. I will then go through each of these answers individually. Okay, so let's start with A. Clearly we can see an OH, an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. So in this particular example, we're definitely going to have hydrogen bonding occurring. With B, we've got carbons and hydrogens. Well, that's not going to work. A carbon with a bromine, that's not going to work either. So this is not going to exhibit hydrogen bonding. Okay, let's have a look at C. C has a nitrogen bonded to a hydrogen and another bonded to a hydrogen. So in this example, we're definitely going to see hydrogen bonding occurring. D is quite easy. Hydrogen fluoride, HF, so we've got hydrogen bonding occurring there. E's interesting. Carbons and hydrogens. No, that's not going to work. A carbon with a chlorine. Well, earlier on I mentioned there were only three elements when bonded to hydrogen that could exhibit hydrogen bonding. And chlorine was not one of them. So this is not going to exhibit hydrogen bonding. And finally, we've got this molecule here, 
which has a carbon attached to an oxygen, that's not going to work. A carbon attached to a hydrogen, three times, that's not going to work. A carbon attached to an oxygen, that's not going to work. But finally, we come across an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. Now that will work. So this molecule here will exhibit hydrogen bonding. So in summary, A, which happens to be ethanol, will exhibit hydrogen bonding. C, which happens to be ethylamine, that will exhibit hydrogen bonding. D will exhibit hydrogen bonding, and so will F. What you'll find is molecules that exhibit hydrogen bonding tend to have higher boiling points compared to molecules of similar masses as a direct consequence of hydrogen bonding. So if we look at a water molecule and we calculate its molar mass, well, it's only 18 grams. And if we compare that, say, to something like methane, which has a molar mass of 16 grams, well, water has a boiling point of 100 degrees centigrade, while methane has a boiling point of minus 160 degrees centigrade. Now that's a difference of 260 degrees between these two molecules. But in terms of their mass, well, the mass difference for each of these molecules is only 2 grams. So clearly there's something happening here. So water molecules exhibit hydrogen bonding while methane molecules don't. And it's the hydrogen bonding between the water molecules that helps to keep water as a liquid at room temperature and pressure. Otherwise, it would be a gas just like methane. In order to wrap up this presentation, I'll need to also talk about two further examples of intermolecular bonding. Okay, so let's begin with dipole-dipole attractions. Now, the concept of dipole-dipole attractions is not so different to that of hydrogen bonding. Let me explain. Let's take something like hydrogen chloride. Now there is a clear difference in electronegativity between chlorine and hydrogen. Chlorine has an unfair share of these bonding electrons, which makes it slightly delta negative, while hydrogen is now slightly delta positive. And that is termed a dipole. We have a pole here that's negative and its opposite pole, which is here on the left. So what's a dipole-dipole attraction? Well, a dipole-dipole attraction exists between two molecules that exhibit this type of scenario. So if I have another hydrogen chloride molecule, it will orientate itself with a positive hydrogen, slightly positive hydrogen, towards the chlorine. And here we have a dipole-dipole attraction between two hydrogen chloride molecules. So this is another example of intermolecular bonding. So hydrogen bonding is actually really similar to this. The only difference is it's stronger. So on the hierarchy of intermolecular strength, hydrogen bonding is found at the top, followed by dipole-dipole attractions. And finally, van der Waals forces, which we'll cover now. So with van der Waals forces, the difference in electronegativity between two atoms within a covalent bond is negligible. The electronegativity value of both these hydrogens is exactly the same, and that will give you a difference of zero. So you can see quite clearly that there is no polarity and no dipoles occurring within molecules that are made up of the same element. However, having said that, Van der Waals states there are occasions when such molecules can interact with each other and that interaction leads to a slight shift in the way these electrons are being shared. So for example here what could potentially happen is this hydrogen atom here may end up with an unequal share of electrons from this covalent bond. So it'll be slightly delta negative which leaves this slightly delta positive and then that causes its neighboring molecule to follow suit ending up with a slightly positive on this guy and a slightly negative on this guy and then we have this really tiny attraction that occurs between these molecules 
Now I have to emphasize that the attraction here is extremely weak because this partial negative and this partial positive is so tiny compared to say dipole dipole attractions or hydrogen bonding. So this we consider to be a van der Waals force, which we typically see in gases. Now earlier on we compared the boiling points of methane, which is CH4, with water. So clearly methane is a gas as it boils at minus 160 degrees centigrade, whereas water is a liquid at room temperature and pressure. So the reason why methane is a gas and water is a liquid is because of the different types of intermolecular attractions that occur between methane molecules and between water molecules. Note though that we're not dealing with the same elements within these covalent bonds. We've got carbons and hydrogens, carbons and hydrogens, carbons and hydrogens. So clearly there's going to be a slight dipole. And if you were to do the calculation to work out what the difference would be, you'd have to look this up in a table of some kind. But hydrogen has an electronegativity value of 2.1 and carbon has a value of 2.5. So clearly the difference here is not that much. It's only 0 0.4. So when you have an electronegativity difference of 0 0.4 or less, it's considered to be negligible and not large enough to create a significant dipole-dipole attraction. So it falls back a notch and ends up as a van der Waals force. Hence the reason why methane exists as a gas versus water which exists as a liquid. So in summary, the strength of the intermolecular bonding between molecules increases as we move from van der Waals forces to dipole-dipole attractions to hydrogen bonding. And that has a cons and that's reflected by the physical state of that substance. So van der Waals forces, which is a weak force we typically see amongst gas molecules, Dipole-dipole attractions we typically see amongst liquids and gases, while hydrogen bonding we see amongst solids and liquids. So clearly there's an increase in boiling point as we move up this hierarchy of intermolecular bonding. Finally, let's just finish off with some review questions to help consolidate the information we've covered so far in this presentation. So once you've attempted those questions, come back to the presentation after pressing pause and we'll go through the answers together. Okay, so for question number one, A represents an intramolecular bond. Recall how intramolecular bonds hold atoms within molecules. And we've got a molecule here that has been held together by a number of covalent bonds. B, on the other hand, is connecting this molecule to a second molecule. So B represents an intermolecular bond between two separate molecules. This bond helps to keep these two molecules connected with each other. Which type of bond is stronger? Well, intramolecular bonds that occur within molecules are stronger than intermolecular bonds that occur between molecules. One way to think of this is to think of an intranet connection versus an internet connection. So intranet connections tend to be stronger than internet connections. Correctly classify A and B into the following categories. Well A, which happens to be a covalent, and B happens to be a hydrogen bond. Question four, would we expect this to be a gas or a liquid? Well, it contains an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen, just like this example here. So another one of these molecules could orientate themselves in this fashion to give a hydrogen bond. So the reason why this exists as a liquid is because of hydrogen bonding. This brings me to the conclusion of today's presentation. Thank you for listening.